Hello guys, today I will show you what happens if you don't validate data. In this demo example, I will show you how to reach someone else's record or even update someone else's record if the validation is not enough. Here's an example project based on Laravel Breeze and it is full of transactions based on locations. So if I register, for example, as a user and I choose three locations, I register and in this demo project and I had a similar demo project a few videos ago, I can choose a location so I can switch. For example, it could be team, it could be location, it could be company and I view the transactions of that location. So every transaction in the database is assigned to the location with location ID field. So I can switch here and view the transactions of another location and go to view location details for example, right? And I will show you three examples how to hack the data if it's not validated enough. So imagine I'm an employee in one of those locations, in one of those companies, and I want to see how other guys are doing in another location. Example number one, showing the transaction of another location. So by default, this table is featured securely by auth user current location ID field, which is set on the registration. So for list for the table, it is secured by location ID and I cannot really change that with any parameter or anything. But then the link to show the transaction, if we go to index blade, in the table, the link to transaction is transaction show with transaction with route model binding. Sounds cool, right? And then in the show, we have this. Just basically use route model binding and passing the transaction and in the transactions show, all is done is just showing the transaction. Looks kind of secure, right? But is it? If I click view, I can go to transaction with ID 41. But can I guess someone else's transaction? 12? Yep, surely. 11? Another record. And see the location 829 address. And it's not in my list of location. So it is someone else's transaction. And you can secure that in two ways. First, you can actually check that in the show. So for example, if auth user locations, locations is a belongs to many relationship, contains, it's a collection method of contains, transaction location ID. If does not contain, then we show 403, forbidden abort 403. So that's one way and let's try it out. Transaction 11 now shows forbidden to us, but if we click back to my own transaction, it should be okay. So this is one way to secure that, just check the records relationship. Another way of dealing with that is to use eloquent global scopes. And here I've opened the documentation of Laravel. Basically you add a scope, you add a where query to all the queries related to that model. In our case, it's a transaction model. So why don't we filter all the transaction select queries to also filter the locations. So we go to the transaction model and let's copy the example from the documentation. So in booted method of a model, we add a global scope with name, for example, locations. We need to add eloquent builder. I think it's Lumina database eloquent builder. It's automatically added here on top. And then we have where location add or location ID, sorry. And in fact, we have where in location ID, auth user locations, plug ID. I think this is the syntax. And let's check if auth is actually exists. So if auth user or if auth check actually, if auth check, then we add that global scope. And then we can in controller, we can remove that 403. And let's see if it still works. We refresh the page. This is my own transaction. It should work. It doesn't break. But if I go to someone else's transaction, it shows not found. It doesn't show forbidden. It shows not found. So suit yourself which message you want to show, what is more convenient to you. The global scope basically adds another layer of query and it will check the locations for all the queries on that model. Now let's take a look if I manage to hack into all the list of different location. So we have our own list of transactions, right? Filtered by one of the three locations that I belong to. And what happens if I click this? We can go down below and see the link. I'm not sure if you see that. It's slash change location slash two. 
This one is slash change location slash four. So if we copy that link address, for example, paste it here, change location slash four. And what happens inside of that change location? It is in one of the controllers. It works like this. It's just updating current location ID of the current user, then redirects back and that current location ID is used in the table here. Looks okay, right? But in here, we don't actually check if the location is among the locations that I belong to. So I can actually go into the browser and for example, change location, change for ID to for example, change location one and let's see what is one and what happens then. And I have a transaction list from location ID one, which I don't belong to, but it also appears in my list. So I didn't even have access to that, but it shows the address of location on my list and transactions from that location, which I don't actually have access to or shouldn't have access to. To change that, of course, we need to check the location here and the code is this. So I've copied it from elsewhere. Again, same thing, if the locations does not contain the current location ID, then we abort 403. Or in another place, again, we can use the same scope. So if we have that scope enabled, I've commented out for a while, Again, even if I manage to go to that location, the transactions would be filtered. Actually, we probably should do both. So filter the location, so not even allow to change the location to the one that I don't belong to. And also, even if I manage to do that, restrict the transactions with global scope. A third example is about posting the data for another location. So basically framing someone for some expense or something. So you can post $100 or something with the description of test. And here's location which you probably should check. If it comes from some dropdown, it could be manipulated. So if we save that in the same location, we have that in the list and everything is fine. But what if we change the location manually via browser? And I will show you that in a minute. If we open create blade, it's just a dropdown select of location ID. In the dropdown, we see only the locations of the user. So it is filtered correctly and securely. Great. But the post itself, if we go to transaction controller store, it validates the amount, the description and location ID only for required, but location ID is not validated for the location of the user. So let me show you what I can do here in the browser. I go to the inspect of the browser in Chrome and I see select name with options of two, three and four. Why can't we edit that to one? I don't have any specific hacking tools or anything, it's just in the browser and then I enter some description and save the transaction and look what happens. This is not in the location that I belong to. In the database, the new record, if we refresh, it is assigned to location ID one, although I don't belong to it. So this is how easy it is to manipulate any input data via get request or even form inputs. If it is a chosable input, then you need to validate it from the backend. So here it should be required and also in, in auth user locations block ID. I think it's the syntax and also that block ID should be probably comma separated. So implode with comma. Not sure, we will test it out. So basically location ID is filtered. And now if I try to do that, Let's try to do that again, new transaction, again, inspect here, change that to value one and added something, save transaction, the validation, the selected location ID is invalid. See, it is filtered out. And let's take a look at another security issue with a bit different example. For example, if I want to save the transaction, but the location is not chosen, it can be null by default. So if the user adds the transaction, then location ID is null. Or for example, for admins, it is allowed to choose the location. And in the controller, let's imagine that we don't validate the location ID at all because it's not present in the form. So why should we validate that? And we use request all here, which seems secure, right? But now look what happens if I pass the location ID, for example. In that form, I go and do same inspect. And then I add a hidden field. So let's copy that hidden field copy element and then for example, edit as HTML 
and add another hidden field with name, location, ID, and location is one, for example, which is again, not my location. Okay, so I've edited that. So we've added another hidden field and let's add something here, save transaction. And let's take a look at the database. Did it save successfully? And what is the value of location ID? It should be null. This is actually location ID one, the last record. So I kind of hacked the system. Although the location was not supposed to be chosen, I did choose the location. And to prevent that, of course, you need to not use request all. Just remember to not use request all at any times. Just do either request only and then the fields of amount and description. That's one way. Or use request validated. So validated will return only the fields which were validated by this sentence. So validated, for example, and then we can use the validated here like this validated. Or if you use form request, actually, instead of the request, which would be like store transaction request or something, then you could skip this part and do request validated like this. And then it will contain only the fields that you validate. So it would not contain any location ID or user ID or no matter what is passed else, only the validation rules define which fields are passed then to the model. So these are quick examples of security issues, which I see quite often because people do not filter the data and allow parameters to be overridden, to be passed maliciously. So I hope it is helpful for your applications, for your security issues to be fixed. And if you want more videos on this topic or similar topics, subscribe to the channel to support me. I have a silent goal of reaching 100,000 subscribers until the end of 2021. We'll see how it goes, but you can help me with that. And also you can support the channel financially by checking out one of the three products that you can see on the screen. By purchasing them, you're giving me more free time to focus on these free videos on this YouTube channel. See you guys in other videos.